Hi everyone, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I'm bringing you another review for another day. And today is Sword Coast Legends for PC, an isometric 3D role-playing game in the same vein as the excellent Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Neverwinter Nights, and other fully 3D Three Force View titles. You know, it's titles like these that have created long-term fans of many D&D pen and paper faithful like myself, men and women who still wear their medium-sized Gary Gygax t-shirts despite having outgrown them so much that Gary's name looks more like Morris Code across their chests. But newer titles like Pillars of Eternity have really moved the genre forward, or at the very least kept it chugging along. Does Sword Coast Legends have the chops to have its name summoned in the same hallowed tones? As always, if you like the review, please subscribe. So here we go, the review for Sword Coast Legends. Magic rock telephones, halfling psychopaths, dwarven mother guilt trips, and where critical hits reveal that in this world, everyone's liver is packed with Simtex and just ready to explode. Graphics are up first. Well. I have to say at first that there is a great deal to like here. You notice right away that the worlds and areas are actually ultra detailed and unlike many games having come out recently, the worlds have less of a painting look and more of a fully realized world look with movement in many locations and a great deal of clutter and environmental scenery emerging in all of the gameplay areas. For example, forest and woodland maps are suitably overgrown with sprawling trees high above your character's heads, obfuscating your view for a moment as your character sprint through the land gutting absolutely everything that even has the slightest temptation to move. And speaking of murder, the attack animations and overall look of all the characters and the NPCs is really well done. Though when making them in the character generator, many of them looked a bit worse for wear, but once in the game, the entire look really coalesces into a very captivating world overall. Now, textures are somewhat high resolution with a couple areas looking a bit like someone forgot that this was a 2015 video game and not something from a couple years ago. But most of those are relegated to very small bits that you don't actually explore in. In fact, much of Sword Coast Legends, from its graphics to its gameplay, focuses very solidly on presenting a specific picture and not this vast palette. Additionally, there's an absolute excellent adherence to making locations feel different from one another, whether it be ancient tombs, bandit caves, lofty castles filled with morally ambiguous antagonists, or just small snowy towns. Most look different enough to remember hours and hours later. I'd love to see additional optimizations though, especially across the board during environmental effects like large areas where there's a large number of spells or a lot of snow particles as I was noticing frame rate drops when that would happen. Now I would say very good overall with excellent spell effects and designs and environmental locations and just really good overall architecture and design. But it's got a couple misses as well, especially in optimization and in some of those texture passes. Sound, music, and voice. I'm on it! with four of us than with two. Let's go quickly before they have a chance to regroup. If we do this right, one guard at the caravan will do. A stranger. What do you need? As always, you guys know me, sound is up first, and for the most part, it's absolutely rock solid with environmental effects impacting spells and voices sometimes. Battle is a pointed affair of swords and sorcerers grunting under the strain of being on fire and still trying to land killing blows through shields and armor that echo loudly when hit. It's all well done, and though there aren't any options for things like surround sound, which was disappointing, uh, playing it both at 5.1 and stereo on good headphones showed a crisp attention to high bitrate sampling for almost everything. I do wish that some of the spells had a little bit more of a bombastic feeling than they did. The fireball in particular hits with all the impact of someone throwing a handful of confetti at your face and yelling boom and doesn't have the low end thunder that you expect from someone basically making a mini asteroid, lighting it on fire and throwing it at you close to the speed of sound. Altogether, a good solid effort with some improvement that could be shown. Music. Absolutely awesome and easily official soundtrack worthy. Dark themes with low mournful horns and what sounds like tortured monks singing from time to time is then quickly replaced with light strings and almost playful arrangements when entering forested areas, unless those forested areas are controlled by rampaging forest creatures. It's altogether bombastic, but luckily exactly where it needs to be. And when it needs to make itself scarce so that the player can experience vocals or battle sounds, it does it extremely well. Just an overall great soundtrack right up my alley for a fantasy game voice. 
another well done section. It's not only absolutely a tremendous cast with maybe one or two that fall victim of odd accents, it's also a testament to total control over the script with characters pausing during speech, hesitating accurately on moments of tension, and delivering subtle messages of threat with just the right amount of I'm gonna kill you syllable pronunciation. The two work in excellent concert here, and though there are probably no equals to some of the amazing characters we've seen in past role-playing games, of special note here are folks like Homet, a character that at first comes in and you're expecting the typical comical relief, but as time passes on they become far more varied and complex than I ever expected. Now I think it's always good to remember what these games are like before expectations get too high and lofty for realistic voice work. These kinds of titles allow you to murder families, undress the dead bodies, and then wear those clothes and Uncle Bill's special hat to go talk to whatever family members are remaining, and most of the time no one seems to mind, and they may even ask you to go on an adventure for them. Once you get past that, very good voice acting and really excellent scripting. Gameplay. Now, as with any good romance, it all starts with a nightmare, missing children, and a plot revolving around an ancient guild. In this case, it's yours, the Burning Dawn, and you're being hunted by another guild, the Gilded Eye. Here the Eye think that the Dawn is just really damn evil, for reasons that hilariously remind you of a medieval Hatfield and McCoy feud if one of them had involved demons. So the Eye decide to visit on your group the most evil actions ever thought up, because as the saying goes, when fighting evil be much worse because no one's ever going to remember. Lighting people on fire? Check. Cutting off defenseless people's heads? Check. Torture chambers? Check. Somehow confusing my double sword wearing six foot male for a female actress? Check. Like I said, that's just evil. The plot rolls out across four large acts as you try to uncover the why and how of it all and see if you can even do anything about it. And awesomely enough, they give you a lot of tools to do that. As a typical role playing game, you build a character here from the typical Dungeons and Dragons requisites you expect, like halfling, half elf, human, dwarf, and some assorted sub races, character classes like fighter, wizard, and cleric, and a couple voice options, and a less than satisfactory number of visual options, to be brutally honest. Now, you continue by outfitting them in basics and some clothing, some weapons, and then choosing a couple starting skills on skill trees that for the most part are about how to get to an enemy's soft, chewy center the quickest. Once done, you quickly jump into the game. Now, gameplay has all the typical role-playing features you would expect. You travel to various places using an overland map and then jump into the expected three-fourths view for battling, sexing, stealing, spelling, or stealthing your way to victory. As you adventure and do those things, you get experience points for leveling up, allowing you to increase your attributes and skills, of which there are an incredible amount, allowing for a really good deal of flexibility. For me, role-playing games are like character classes. Everyone can be a fighter, but it's the skills and talents that make each unique and exceptional and memorable. Because of that, there is a tremendous amount of awesome in this title. First, role-playing and exploring is somewhat streamlined compared to other titles in the genre, and though that doesn't mean less, it does mean a bit more focused. This is enormously helped by the graphics and complexity in both map makeup, but also in environmental design, with the previously mentioned architecture and foliage really filling out locations, making the game's fewer locations feel a bit more memorable than if there had been hundreds of them. It's this structure that does help the gameplay in the title. You're never really at a loss for what to do or becoming overwhelmed in the title's locations or quests, even though I know some gamers like that. Even if you have a large number of quests, most of the time it doesn't suffer from anything more than the very occasional map mess of other role-playing games where everyone in the world is waiting on you to friggin' gather apples for them because they were born without hands. Indeed, most of the quests are actually awesomely leveled, paced, and presented for what you're doing. And though there are a few hunting trips and the like, for the most part you're playing a character already known for being a devastating dealer of delicious death, so having you go and help someone with a wagon wheel here seems a little bit like Kobe Bryant heading out the local 4-H basketball team. Occasionally, your team members will have missions, and they range from just okay to very good depending on both the writing and how much you're going to like that particular character, because some I wasn't really a fan of. Now personally, I love the chemistry of the characters though, regardless of who I put on my team and the mixing of their personalities. Additionally, the combat system and UI just worked for me, remembering of course that it's a typical role-playing game. There isn't anything at all surprising here, and though I wasn't a fan of the way the action bar made it difficult to move skills around or the occasional cumbersomeness of the map here and there. You know, everything for the most part just sort of worked, and the interplay between information and a battle and understanding how far you can push it before needing to rethink your options or smash the space bar to pause the action, character interactions with levels is also excellent with your NPCs keeping a high level of chatter and some 
of it very intelligently written. Is it Obsidian level? Probably not. I can't say any of the titles I've mentioned before though made me laugh out loud and the first time you hear one of your party open a set of boxes and yell, maybe it's a sandwich. I hope your reaction was like mine, which was to actually laugh out loud and there are a good number of those kinds of interactions to go around. If I was asked to compare the overall title, I'd say it's far more like Icewind Dale than Baldur's Gate, less sprawling and more focused on what it wants to accomplish, which is the graphical representation of a group of badasses exploding enemies in hilarious fashion and constantly giving them an interesting plot in which to do so. Now, that's just the single player. The multiplayer is a whole other beast. Not only is there a campaign co-op, which is an absolute plus in my book, but you also have the DM mode, which is where you get to gather four friends to enter into dungeons you either already created or random ones you put together right before the game and jump in. As the players battle, you as the DM gather DM threat, which allows you to purchase monsters, traps, and assorted items to kill them off. If they do better, you get more, keeping the balance at least somewhat within the realms of playability. While the players are basically playing a slightly shallower version of the main title with a little less story, the DM mode and controls where the magic is. You have a great deal of control in the environment, setting up encounters, dropping bad guys in, adding traps, and basically doing everything you can to digitally homicide the players. In a very intelligent move, the developers allow the DM to also get loot, which not only keeps the DM engaged and feeling like they get rewarded, but also by dropping things like free hordes that the DM can spawn that don't cost threat at all. This can turn the tide from the players having a somewhat easy go of it, especially if the DM doesn't watch their resources at the starting, and the players are suddenly yelling retreat as a horde of drow magic users descend on their plans for resting up to heal. There's a real magic here because what appears to be somewhat action-packed and maybe what some would call shallow actually has a uniquely different kind of strategy to it that rewards both heavy-handed action but also subtle slyness on the part of everyone involved. As the DM, you can take over individual monsters and control them like a normal player for a small cost. You can promote monsters to higher levels also for a cost or demote them and get some of that threat back. You can also do this with a great deal of aspects within the level as a whole. Now, one of the biggest pluses is you can not only make your own characters, but you can make your own monsters, taking already created monsters, changing their looks, and giving them all kinds of assorted skills, including ones based on the classes themselves. So if you want a cleric spider leading your larger group of smaller spiders, all outfitted with various mage damaging skills, go for it. Give it a name and the game figures out its price and boom, you're off to the races. It is fantastic. Now, is it like playing D&D? No, not even close. But it is a very interesting halfway house between constant action and thoughtful strategy, and it's fun to see how different groups of players interact with your ideas. You can also create your own campaigns, and there are a good number of campaigns already created which can be played with or without a DM depending on how you set it up. Creating a campaign is slightly more in-depth, but it's also incredibly easy with a what-you-see-is-what-you-get template system for setting situations up, entering quest text, moving characters from one quest to another, and keeping the players moving. Obviously, Obviously, it won't be as robust as developer-made campaigns, but I played two today that were highly professional and actually incredibly fun. Listen, this aspect just may not be as detailed as some gamers want, but it's detailed enough that those of us who have a talent for that kind of creation will be able to make some very enjoyable gameplay memories for others. Additionally, its complexity matches perfectly with the single player, feeling as if the title sort of gels together overall. Now, where some titles excel in one particular area, others do well in many. Sword Coast's campaign, while excellently voiced and long enough for almost any jaded gamer, doesn't offer the full excellence of some other titles, being a slightly more linear affair than many other games in the genre. But it does offer a bevy of multiplayer options and community extras, and other titles don't do that. And the DM mode and the ease of creating campaigns and levels and various options within those modes is an excellent gameplay add. And other than one or two disconnects playing multiplayer, it's a feature that is absolutely highly polished. Fun factor. I had a blast. Hell, I'm still having a blast. The game's just fun, whether it's the interplay of quick action and moving set pieces of the single player, or the additional power creating my own campaigns, or the pump I got when I almost defeated a group of heroes today as the DM. The game just never stopped being fun. Sure, there were lulls, most games have them at some point, but as a package, it's stunningly fun. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never talk about it again rating scale. This is easily a buy. It's 35 bucks, has a stunning amount of longevity, and a good deal of modes and features for many gamers to enjoy. It's not perfect, and it doesn't have that fine sheet of beautification that other titles in the genre may have, but it has it where it counts. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you liked this review. If you did, hit thumbs up. If you didn't, hit thumbs down. And as always, peace out.